The abdominal cavity is the largest cavity of the human body. It is located between the thoracic cavity and the pelvis. The peritoneum is a serous coat lining the walls of the abdominal cavity and covering some organs located in it. It secretes and absorbs serous fluid. The peritoneum is divided into two sheaths. The parietal sheath, which covers the internal surface of the abdominal wall, and the visceral sheath, which covers the organs of the abdominal cavity. Watch more videos in the Easy Anatomy app. With Easy Anatomy, you can learn much easier and faster. We provide a comprehensive video library, related PDF notes, and atlas sections with engaging flashcards. Download Easy Anatomy from the link in the description. The space between the sheaths is called the peritoneal cavity. This cavity is filled with serous fluid. The peritoneum forms various spaces inside the abdominal cavity, separating the organs from each other. The abdominal cavity, which is a space that is delimited by the endoabdominal fascia. The space located behind the peritoneum is called the retroperitoneal space. The space located in the area of the urinary bladder is called the anteroperitoneal space. The space located below the peritoneum is called the subperitoneal space. The visceral peritoneum may cover the internal organs in three distinct ways. Intraperitoneal location means that the organ is covered with the peritoneum from all sides. Mesoperitoneal location means that the organ is covered with the peritoneum on three sides. Extraperitoneal location means that the organ is covered with the peritoneum on only one side. Let us examine a number of derivatives of the peritoneum. Ligaments of the peritoneum, mesenteries, omenta, and folds. Mesenteries are double sheath ligaments or duplications of the peritoneum, fixing the organ and serving as conductors of vessels and nerves. One should remember that the organ with the mesentery is always located intraperitoneally. The root of the mesentery is the place where the mesentery of an organ is fixed to the posterior wall of the abdominal cavity. Let's take a closer look at where the roots of the mesenteries of various organs are located. The root of the mesentery of the transverse colon begins on the right at the level of the second lumbar vertebra and ends to the left at the level of the first lumbar vertebra. The root of the mesentery of the jejunum and ilium arises from the second lumbar vertebra and ends in the projection of the right sacroiliac joint. The root of the mesentery of the sigmoid colon is attached to the left at the level between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae. The root of the mesentery of the rectum is attached at the level between the first and third sacral vertebrae. The root of the mesentery of the vermiform process is attached to the terminal part of the ilium. The omentum is the elongated mesentery of the stomach, between the sheaths of which there are accumulations of adipose tissue in the form of lobules, as well as plexuses of blood vessels. There are two omenta in the human body, the greater omentum and the lesser omentum. Let us examine them in greater detail. The lesser omentum is a duplication of the peritoneum stretched between the liver, the lesser curvature of the stomach, and the superior part of the duodenum. It consists of two ligaments that pass into one another, the hepatogastric ligament and the hepatoduodenal ligament. The portal vein, proper hepatic artery, common bile duct, lymphatic vessels, and nerves pass through its thickness. The greater omentum is the elongated dorsal mesentery of the stomach. It consists of three ligaments, 
the gastrocolic ligament, which connects the stomach and the transverse colon, the gastrosplenic ligament, which connects the stomach and spleen, the gastrophrenic ligament, which connects the stomach and the diaphragm. Peritoneal folds are duplications of the parietal peritoneum formed by vessels, ducts, ligaments, or fat deposits passing under it. The following structures are located on the anterior abdominal wall. The median umbilical fold, which contains the closed urinary duct of the fetus, or uricus, forming the median umbilical ligament. The medial umbilical fold, which contains the closed umbilical artery, forming the medial umbilical ligament. The lateral umbilical fold, which contains the inferior epigastric arteries and veins. On the internal surface of the anterior abdominal wall, above the inguinal ligament, three pairs of fossae are present between the above-mentioned folds. Two supravesical fossae, which are located on the sides of the medial umbilical fold. The medial inguinal fossa, which is located medially to the lateral umbilical fold and corresponds to the external opening of the inguinal canal. The lateral inguinal fossa, which is located laterally to the lateral umbilical fold and corresponds to the internal opening of the inguinal canal. Under the inguinal ligament, there is another fossa called the femoral fossa. It corresponds to the internal opening of the femoral canal. Let us now go even lower, into the lesser pelvis. The following structures are present in the lesser pelvis. The rectovesical fold in men, the rectouterine fold, and vesicouterine fold in women. There are also fossae or recesses on the posterior wall of the peritoneal cavity. Retroperitoneal hernias may form in them. The superior duodenal recess and the inferior duodenal recess are located near the duodeno-jejunal flexure. Behind the cecum, there is the retrocecal recess. The intersigmoid recess is located near the sigmoid colon. In addition, the so-called floors can be distinguished in the peritoneal cavity. According to the conventional classification, there are two floors upper and lower. The border between them is the transverse colon and its mesentery. There are three so-called bursae on the upper floor. The hepatic bursa, which contains the right lobe of the liver. It has the subphrenic space and the subhepatic space. The pregastric bursa, which is located anteriorly to the stomach and the lesser omentum. The omental bursa, which is located posteriorly to the stomach and the lesser omentum. It contains three recesses. The superior omental recess, the inferior omental recess, and the splenic recess. The omental bursa communicates with the hepatic bursa by the omental or Winslow foramen. In the lower floor of the peritoneal cavity, there are two lateral canals and two mesenteric sinuses. The right lateral canal, which is located between the right wall of the abdomen and the ascending colon. And the left lateral canal, which is located between the left wall of the abdomen and the descending colon. The root of the mesentery of the small intestine divides the lower floor into the right mesenteric sinus, and the left mesenteric sinus. The right sinus is closed, and the left one communicates with the pelvic cavity inferiorly. Where the peritoneum passes from the bladder to the rectum, men have the rectovesical pouch. In women, the peritoneum passing from the bladder to the uterus forms the vesicouterine pouch, and moving from the uterus to the rectum, it forms the rectouterine pouch.